Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. A few things, get over to draftstreet.net with the link on the screen or below and sign up for the free roll that starts tomorrow. You have time until about 4 p.m. Eastern, only in the U.S., but it's really cool. It's one day fantasy, NBA, fantasy league. Not all these different lineups and it goes on for months and months. This is one day and you can win some money. Secondly, get on Twitter, follow us at B-Ball Source, where we have a great conversation every day about who the best players are, or even the controversy over Kobe and him landing on his ankle. So don't miss that out there. And also, SB Nation is bringing me into New York over the weekend to do a really cool Selection Sunday show. So stay tuned for that at SBNation.com on their uh, college basketball side. I've been studying up, and I'm going to be ready to give you the same insight I gave you here in the NBA for the college game. It should be really exciting. Let's move on to the Grizzlies versus the Clippers. And a couple things really. Marcus All went crazy and really hammered them, and it was very easy for him. And I'm going to show you how the offense works really well to get him and Zebo working in opposition of each other, and each you know, whoever is open gets great shots. And then also, uh, Vinny didn't play CP3 and Blake Griffin for the first six minutes of the fourth quarter. And I'm going to show you why it seemed like it would hurt them normally, but it didn't quite really affect them much. Uh, except for one half of the court, and I will show you that. So, here we go, sports fans. Very simple offense. Gasol sets a sideline screen and roll and rolls to the hoop, and because DeAndre Jordan has to help a little bit, he gets very deep position. He will not miss many of those when he gets that close to the hoop. Another sideline screen and roll, and you'll see the Clippers play ice with Chris Paul forcing baseline and DeAndre Jordan sinking in. And there's Blake Griffin, who's supposed to come over to help. Way too slow, way ineffectual. Watch how patient Gasol is looking to run the offense, and when he sees how bad DeAndre Jordan is guarding him, he says thanks and nails the jumper. These shots are effortless when DeAndre guards him like this. It's simple, he runs the offense. Two screens make Turiap have to watch the cutter, and that gives him deep post position with one foot in the lane. He catches it like that, he's gonna score almost every time. The funny thing is, when he goes straight to the post and doesn't screen beforehand, it's a lot easier to guard that, and here, Odom can take away position and push him out a little bit farther than he wants to be, and it's a lot harder to make that shot. Here's something really interesting. The better defense Blake plays on Zebo, the easier it is for Gasol to score, because Odom's got a stunt to help out on the lob, and when he closes out too far, it lets Gasol get right by him to the hoop for a dunk. Again, runs the offense, screen and roll, and that gets him some space from DeAndre Jordan. And here, terrific defense by Blake to deny the pass, but that just invites him to get to the hoop. Again, watch Blake's terrific defense to front, and all that does, though, is forces DeAndre Jordan to stunt over there for a second, giving Gasol another jumper. It's really remarkable how you can run your offense, not try to force anything, and benefit greatly from this. Watch the dribble pitch, a simple roll, and he can hit that easy shot. By the way, when Blake rotates over, look how open Zebo is. This is how this offense helps both of the big men equally. Gasol is very comfortable up at the top of the key, which is remarkable for a big man. The Clippers got away with some pretty bad rotations. Here, Gasol and Griffin get mixed up and leave a player wide open, but Gasol misses the pass, and they even leave him open for a shot, but he can't knock that one down. Let's move on to the fourth quarter where the Memphis Grizzlies took control of the game. The Clippers want to be in zone, but Lamar Odom has no idea what they're doing, must have not been paying attention in the timeout. He finally gets in the right position, but watch how far Grant Hill comes out in the zone, which is way too far, and then watch how far Odom comes out to contest that shot. No wonder they get the rebound, but they get away with that by Zebo missing the tip. The Clippers move to a 1-2-2 zone, and watch how they attack by hitting the short corner with Tony Allen. That forces a rotation of Barnes down, but also Jamal Crawford comes over as well to guard Zebo, and that's a mistake because he's too far from Jared Bayless, who gets a skip pass and a nice open three in rhythm. With eight minutes to go, not having Blake Griffin and CP3 in hasn't killed them yet as they get a great defensive play by Matt Barnes, who doubles Zebo down low and forces a miss. Without CP3 running the show, they don't really have much of an offense. It looks pretty bad. However, with Chauncey Billups in there posting up the smaller Bayless, they end up getting a good shot that he can hit, and they don't miss CP3 so much. Matt Barnes has a reputation of being a great defender, but you can't go underneath the screen against a shooter like Pondexter. Jeez. And again, without CP3, they were running a decent offense and getting good shots. This one's a really good look by Jamal Crawford. He couldn't knock down. Here's where not having Blake Griffin in there hurt them on defense. He wasn't in to deny the pass to Zebo, and there's Odom letting him catch the ball way down low. 
Inexplicably, Chauncey Phillips is going to lose his man, Tony Allen. Grant Hill doesn't look to box anybody out, and there's the tip by Allen. Again, you can't blame Vinny for not having CP3 and Blake in on offense because, again, while there is a bunch of standing around in a tipped ball, they do get a beautiful shot layup and a foul for two free throws for Barnes. You couldn't do any better with the other guys in. They bring the two big guns back in, but here they put Blake Griffin on Marcus Saul, and that means Lamar Odom has to try and guard Zebo down low, and that's a recipe for disaster. When Conley misses the shot, Zebo easily muscles him out of the way and gets the putback. And this time, Blake Griffin does another great job being glued to Marcus Saul, not letting him get anything out there in the perimeter, but guess what? There's Odom giving up really low position to Zebo, who takes advantage. They keep Odom on Zebo again, and here you'll see him desperately try to front him like Blake Griffin was doing. But at this point, even though he's in front on the high side, well, look where the ball is. It's on top getting a screen and roll. He should be more in the middle of the lane so he can help out because Matt Barnes gets blown by and there's no help on that dunk. Game over. So there you have it, sports fans. I don't think that the Clippers are on the same level as the Grizzlies, who are now playing terrific with Tayshaun Prince. It's not even their defensive rating that's changed. It's pretty much the same since it was before Prince got there. But their offensive rating has gone up five points. So Prince is not even scoring that much more than he was where, when he was with uh, Detroit, but it's just better movement. There's a lot less bad shots that Rudy Gay was taking and missing, and it makes them a much more fluid team. And Conley's getting more confidence and more shots. So they're very dangerous now, and everybody in the West Coast, in the Western Conference, needs to watch out. And the Clippers just need to kind of, you know, it's going to be ugly no matter what they do because their offense isn't very solid, and they rely on the brilliance of CP3 and Blake Griffin. And in the playoffs, when enough teams have enough talent to match that, they're going to probably have some trouble getting out of the second round of the playoffs. So don't forget the free roll uh, with the link down below and on the screen. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. And don't miss our big Selection Sunday show uh, on this Sunday uh, following the, uh, the bracket release by the NCAA. Should be all some great stuff and can't wait to get there. And then tomorrow we're going to have a chat with Ben Golliver of SB Nation about the NBA. So lots of stuff coming up all week and all month and all season long at the at B-Ball Breakdown. Because don't forget, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in?